I think they're choosing all of us. I mean, spirit's always in, inviting us to to do our work. Okay, whether or not we understand that it's it's inspiration from spirit or not, um, I just happened to. It was really obvious, and so um, I think that that we're all kind of chosen to do our specific work, and. And uh, usually if it's that work, it's going to present a challenge to us. <laughs> it's going to be a little out of the box sometimes um, or a little triggering or scary for us uh, on some level. So they choose all of us. I don't feel special on any level. I think we're all special. My my joy is to inspire other people to consider these thoughts. Just consider you might be here to throw a serious party in your own unique way that can benefit you, your family, and hundreds of thousands of other people. Hello, my extraordinary women friends. This is a fun episode because we're going to be diving into the topic of angel wealth magic with Corinne Grio. We're going to dive into how angels are connected to money and learn how you can tap into your own angels. I love to play in this realm and I'm excited to introduce you to Corinne. Corinne is the author of Angel Wealth Magic and the Angel Experiment. She is also a Chicana, a Puerto Rican mother, a licensed psychotherapist, a visionary leader, an inspirational speaker, and proprietor of the Casa Condor Retreat Center in Mount Shasta, California. She has dedicated her life to sharing the life-changing gifts she received while learning to work with the angels. Let's meet Corinne Grio. Well, welcome to Extraordinary Women Radio, Corinne. It's great to meet you. Oh, it's wonderful to be here, Cami. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're going to be talking about angels. That's exciting. I love it. Angels and money together. And that's, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So tell us where you're joining us from today. We are, I'm from the Bay Area, California. Ah, and mm. have you been in that a lot of rain recently? Yes, we have. Our road was cut off for oh, quite a so, while. So you couldn't even get to your home? That's or nice. away from your home? Oh, oh we, we couldn't get away. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, congratulations on your new book, Angel Wealth Magic. Thank you. It's it's quite a quite a thing to birth a book, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. It really is. I and you know, this is my this is my second book. Right. And after my first one, I was like, I might not do that anymore. And then, you know, <laughs> here here comes another one. You know, so okay. And how it was was it just flowing to you saying it's you need to be writing this? Yeah, well, I had to. I had to yeah. because I had I had a really an amazing uh, financial miracle, and it was during COVID. And then I decided, look, I I need to write this process down for folks and oh. and uh, and get it out there. Yeah, this essentially spirit said, hey, we're giving you this miracle, but also, yeah, it's not yours to keep to yourself. You so know what was the miracle you gotta you gotta share there share oh that oh it's so embarrassing to say out loud i'd rather people read about it okay <laughs> <'Cause, you> know, <laughs> okay so um i'll just like in a nutshell i, I was going to reduce my my work down a little bit to uh to watch my kids because my kids all of a sudden were home like a mm -hmm. lot of people's kids all right. of a sudden boom right. locked down right so i yeah i i i was like i'm going to reduce my hours but i'm going to do some angel magic instead so i you know, did some research, found some, you know, traditional angels, uh, traditional, the angels that traditional magicians have used for a couple thousand years. So I started looking and I put this thing together and I, I asked for an exorbitant, I'd like, like way more than I ever thought was possible. Um, but you know, spirit was like, do it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. So I, um, I wrote down, Oh, okay. So do I have to tell you? Yeah, just tell us ah! now. Okay. <laughs> You're there. <laughs> oh, here I go. Okay. <laughs> Two, I wrote down $200,000. Uh -huh. uh -huh. um, and, uh, and then within a couple of weeks, I, 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 I was, um, I received $150,000 um, unexpectedly. Oh my and gosh. So, I mean, I wasn't butthurt about that extra 50 spot. You know what I mean? I was uh -huh. like, you know what? Take it as a tip. Oh, you yeah. guys take it. Yeah. Um, so that that was so mind blowing, so yeah. mind blowing. Yeah. That I was, um, I went out and outside into ceremony, lit a fire, and made some offerings to spirit, to angels, and to my ancestors, and uh, and and that's when I received, hey, you know, write write down the process and share it with other people. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what was some of the, the things that you did that, you know, led up to that moment? Um, well, I, I, uh, I did a magical operation. I did an 11 day practice uh-huh. of calling in different uh-huh. angels Okay. and, um, specific angels. So I set it up in a certain way. Um, and I, I also just chose angels that seemed like a good idea, like mm-hmm. angels that can help us feel more confident or, you know, I just felt like all of these kind of boosted the energy to help open you up to magic. Right. Right. So right. as I went through the process, it was, it, it was really fun, but there's some specific angels that I went over a couple of times, <laughs> um, that were specifically designed to attract cash that magicians have used to attract cash as well. And multiply. Yeah. what were those angels? What was that? What were the angels that you used a couple of times that you brought back in a number of times? Um, well, always archangels, but I'm going to leave those angels for the book. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> always archangels. So I always archangels. I, I start with, I started with, for me, I started with Raziel because uh-huh. Raziel will specifically open up and connect you with the angels yeah. and, and kind of be, help you make a more bri- powerful bridge. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> when you're under duress, which I was during that time when I was creating at least the process, the rest of the book came because I had to re- reverse engineer. How do we make sure these people are really open to receive abundance? Cause right. sometimes we block ourselves, right? Sometimes we really block ourselves mentally or just not feeling worthy. So I feel like I could, you know, I attracted that amount of cash, but I have been doing my work for a long, for quite a while. And right, right. you walls. weren't brand new to but angels. I wasn't brand new to angels and I have already, um, broken through a lot of the walls uh, that we need to. So when spirit started first talking to me and communicating to me, not, it wasn't a financial miracle. It was a miracle miracle. And, uh, and so when they first started communicating with me, you know, when you start getting dialed into that voice, it sounds like, or for me, it sounded like really radical things I had to do, like things that I would never have done before. Um, like, for one, change my career into talking, talking about angels. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. So there's no reason to do that. Right. Like who's going to do that? It's preposterous. Right. 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 However, uh, you know, not too, too long later, as I started just stepping out of the spiritual closet, really owning, um, owning what I was hearing versus what I believed. Okay. It had nothing to do with that. What, what I believed was possible. It had to do with wow, there's some inspiration coming in and it keeps on coming in. Therefore, I'm going to see about it. I'm going to yeah. see. And for me, I always believe that like in the beginning, especially because I didn't really trust myself in the beginning. I, I suffered from depression, low self-esteem, all those things. I learned how to trust myself and my own choice making by first trusting that, you know, angels are going to get my back. Yeah. You know, okay, well, yeah. let's see what happens. What's the worst thing that happened? And so with the the book, I kind of wrote some of those preliminary, you know, um, those moments. foundation almost yeah. because yeah. how angels talk to you, how spirit or your soul is going to talk to you. It's very subtle in the beginning. Yeah. And yeah. we think our dreams are, our our dreams are ridiculous dreams. I want to, I want to share I want to talk about angels with people, even though I'm a freaking highly trained psychotherapist and I can talk about your mind all day long. Right. What we want to talk about is giving you access to something that's even more potent and beautiful. That's so cool. That's so cool. It's in it's. I can relate from the perspective of I have. Um, there was a time when I was trying to figure out where my business was going, and I was getting the message is keep going deeper in spirit, and I'm like, what? I, I'm not a spirit, you know, I, that's the soul piece of it, the spirit piece of it. And, you know, if this is a soul business is the message that I got. And I was like, I don't know about that. And, you know, so it's like you have, you have this pathway that you've come and you, you know, kind of the linear ways of thinking. And when the magic starts showing up for you and, and really shifting that it can be a really hard, oh my gosh, can I really go there? So when you came, when you, like, as you said, you came out of the spiritual closet, what, where did you find the courage? Oh, God. Yeah, well, it was so awkward. Um, however, <laughs> so in my one-on-one sessions, uh-huh. I would try and play it off. Like, I'm just, I'm just going to be a therapist, damn it. You know, just, you know, <laughs> suck it up and then I'll be smart. <laughs> but then, I'll, you know, I'd feel like, no, oh, this message coming through all of a sudden. 
or I feel an angel come into the room and I know that they want to talk to this person. So eventually, I eventually just said, hey, you want to try something weird? I know this is weird, but I just got to say it. Can I just yeah. say this? Because it ha usually had nothing to do with what the person is talking about. Um, <laughs> and so when I started doing that and started doing the healing work around it, right. because they showed me how to work with angels, you know, they showed yeah. me how to like, okay. And then, because I had, I had changed so much right. from the work I was doing internally and I was hardly doing anything. I was just talking to them, right. <laughs> asking them for help. And, and uh, it was just working radically. It's not how people talk about their religion they're well i just pray but it, it was like magic like yeah. really working so yeah i started doing that in my sessions and then yeah and then, and then it evolved yeah it's just like because there was so much joy that it would bring and sometimes instant healing i remember yeah. one mother she was crying for six months from postpartum mm -hmm. and and we, we do a little something i'm like you want to try something weird she's like why not i got right. nothing to lose so I did, and uh, she stopped crying. She called me the next the next day, then the next week, and it stuck. Oh wow, that's so yeah. cool! What was your personal journey as you moved through trusting all of that, and yeah. um, you know your own personal growth, right? I mean, I think that there's such. I always say that, and being an entrepreneur is a spiritual journey to begin with, okay. and so were you always spiritual way back in the day, or did this? evolve and show up for you yeah i mean when i was younger mm -hmm. i um i had a very um deeply mystical experience that mm -hmm. kind of caught me off guard and um when i was 19 and okay. so that that uh that kind of sparked interest in things mm -hmm. um i ended up do uh finding a school of western magic Okay. So I stayed and I did that for a while, but then I kind of fell out of love with it and just, you know, wanted to Ooh, grow up and be yeah. an adult. Yeah. I'm so going to go started... do this, this, these, these, these things that you should do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, Oh, I, I need a real career. I got to have children. I'm going to get married. Like all of that stuff. Right. 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 I was still right. miserable the whole time, but, but still, you know, I, I did the thing. Um, and I forget the original question, but. Well, I was, and I think that's the point is like, you get little nuggets, but then you kind of take the side, side roads, if you will, I, I, on I, the I way a there. very long, expensive road. Yeah. To, yeah. To, I, you know, um, but I needed that. I think I needed, yeah. you know, I needed to, to just test the limit. So I left, let it go. So at the time when this miracle happened, uh, no, I was not doing spirituality. I definitely, I'm not religious uh -huh. and it sideswiped me when angels first came in, it sideswiped me when I was really in a low period. I was drinking like a fifth of tequila every couple of days. Um, so, so, so yeah, I think learning to trust came with, okay, if that miracle is possible, you know, right. what else is possible? But the only way to really learn how to trust is to jump, to take really big risks and to see what happens. That's cool. That's super, super right? cool. Yeah, totally. I love it. And and I think, you know, the fact that that trust piece is just such a huge part of it and being curious about it and let's play in this. And I, and I do feel a sense of play and curiosity that That's you're like, oh, well, let's just try this. What happens? Right. And you started trying it with your clients and that sort of thing. So, you know, for our listeners, yeah. when you get those intuitive hits, trust them, let them come through, let that really guide you. I think that can be so powerful. Oh my gosh. No, I mean, it's, I feel, I feel like it's essential, yeah. essential because we have been in a way indoctrinated to not mm -hmm. trust. We've been right. indoctrinated to do everyone else's template for life. Right. And that's why 90% of us are not doing great because yeah. we haven't had the opportunity to take the other voice seriously. Mm -hmm. And you need also to be able to invest and fund. Yeah that idea yeah. that dream and it was awkward i'm telling you it was awkward when i'm talking to my husband about hey i think i want to um i'm gonna just quit my private practice <laughs> and <laughs> you know, it took me a while to eventually get there but i was now at that stage getting called not just to do angel work in my one-on-one -on -one, i was getting called to stop doing one-on-one -on -one to start working internationally and, and going online that was awkward yeah. to, to have to do that yeah. and just you know give up the one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To really open up into what else was really possible. You had to let go of the other to, exactly. to fully step into the other. And then, you know, what it went with that level, with that trust, because it, essentially I, I didn't do it without 
without in, without a strategy or an intelligence about it. Some people they listen to their intuition, they're like, I'm gonna and then I'm being called to go and then nothing happens, you know? Yeah. Um, so they'd like, you know, I definitely have always been logical and strategic about my intuition. So I make sure I have a little, I made sure I had, you know, enough to kind of last for a while mm -hmm. in, in case it doesn't work. And I always believe it's not going to work is the thing. I, every single time I believed it wasn't going to work. Uh, one of the things I was saying earlier, oh, interesting. Our Archangel Jophiel helps you beautify your thoughts. If you're like me and you just think you're, you're a total pessimist when it comes to your own possibilities, everyone else's, it's like a green light go. But for me, oh yeah. Failure, failure, failure. The fake it till you make it thing is so wrong. Yeah. No, you can, yeah. you can totally be convinced you're going to fail. Just do it anyways. Yeah. Yeah. No, so good. So, so good. Let's just even back up a little bit about what are angels? I mean, so because some people might be tuning in and going, what the heck are you guys talking about? So give it <laughs> those are my people. Trust me. Yeah, those yeah. are my people. Um, <laughs> they're all my people, but yeah, I love, I, you know, what the heck and how does it come into play? Yeah. I didn't know either guys. So it was, yeah. Angels are simply messengers. Yeah. And I think the, the, the mistake that we make in our minds, because angels have a rap is they're somehow Christian or Jewish, and then that's it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and that's not true. And, and from what I understand from angels and from even some of the research that I've done, because I've had to go, what the heck are angels? Anyways, because, wow. Um, they, uh, I, from my perspective, they have been around longer than when people created a religion. A yeah. created belief system and that would make total sense to me that totally makes sense <laughs> well and if you look at angels as messengers every tradition all over the world believes in some kind of benevolent ally or force that mm -hmm. is there to help us mm -hmm. and it's ancestors it's i mean it's the mountain spirits it's the it's it's what wherever you look so how you want to define them up to you i really don't care because they didn't seem to care <laughs> they came to me anyways. I didn't even believe in them. So as long as you kind of, <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. Um, they don't care what you do, what you're doing. It's non-judgy. It's yeah. non-judgy a hundred percent. And um, yeah. So, I mean, messengers, we all have them. Yeah. We just don't know it. And they can really help us make, you know, that yearning some, that some of, some of us have that it, we feel so alone or lonely. Mm -hmm. um, that is specifically designed to get us to go deeper and, and to, to think differently about things. So we, we don't have to be pious or, you know, any of those perfection programs that we've been oh, yeah. kind of spoon fed. We can just be who we are and be supported in who we are. And if we know what our heart centered dream is, spirit can really support us with that. Mm, so good. So good. And why angels and money? Yeah. Cause why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, again, people have made this false paradox between money and spirituality. Right. Oh gosh. Can you, you can't do the spiritual. If you're spiritual, you can't yeah. you know, be desiring the money. I've heard those stories. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Bah so, and, and again, I'm not working on a belief system here. I'm yeah. working on, on experience on, yeah. on, on really seeing how humans compartmentalize and we, we judge one thing better than the other spirit. They ain't got time for that. They're just here. You know, what do you need? And money specifically is just an avenue for us to survive and thrive. And spirit has always helped us with those things. So as soon as we get to deconstruct, we need to deconstruct our belief system. And I spend some time in the book helping people deconstruct if they need it, deconstruct our belief system so that we can around just, money, around money. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's such a big thing, right? It's so many together. of my clients. It's, it's there's that moment. I mean, it, myself as well. I mean, there was a point where I really had to work through my relationship with money. Yes. Um, and I think, and I see that in my clients and it's some of, Maybe. you know, that's really important work to do. And then you bring the support in to, around you to work through that. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. 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 Because we have access to it. So, you know, I grew up um, with a poverty mentality. Both my parents grew up in the, in the ghettos, mm -hmm. you know, so I didn't, I wasn't blessed with this already. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You can just do stuff. I didn't know. Yeah. And so I needed help, um, especially for 
moving past the the infrastructure, the architecture that was laid out before me, academia, and then you do this, and then you do this. And there was no out of the boxness for me until really the angels hit the scene. Yeah. 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 Why do you think they showed up for you? Um, well, I, I mean, why did they choose you to write this book, right? Well, I think they're choosing all of us, right? And spirit's always in inviting us to to do our work, okay? Whether or not we understand that it's 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 inspiration mm -hmm. from spirit or not, right. um, I just happened to it was really obvious, right. and so um, I think that that we're all kind of chosen to do our specific work, yeah. and. And uh, usually if it's that work, it's going to present a challenge to us. <laughs> it's going to be a little out of the box sometimes yeah, um, or a little triggering or scary for us uh, on some level. So they choose all of us. I don't feel yeah. special on any level. I yeah. think we're all special. Yeah. My, my joy is to inspire other people to consider these thoughts. Just yeah. Consider you might be here to throw a serious party in your own unique way that can benefit you, your family, and hundreds of thousands of other people. Yeah. Yeah. I or love millions. it. I love it. You know, my, my entry way into spirit was, um, so I've always been a horse person. And, um, so that was, you know, that was just an intricate part of my being through my whole life. But when I discovered people were doing coaching work with horses and, um, you know, I start to, started to experience horses through a whole different lens. Um, I'm an, I'm an equine guided coach and, you know, as part of my, you know, that's what took me into the world of being an entrepreneur, you know, 15 years ago. We, it sneaks up on us. Right? Yeah. And, and, um, <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? I mean, it's like, what, this is like, in so much awe and magic came from some of that work that I learned initially. And I was just like, okay, I would, I don't think I would have ever open the door to spirituality had it not been for the horses because it was just such an easy okay yeah i can see this a little bit and then i started to experience the magic of it all and then i started getting curious about so many other things right i mean i've gone through you know all the different phases of curiosity yeah. and so you know i think i think it show it, it finds our way into us if we you know if we just open up at all yeah exactly and i i don't think it's a because for me, it was, oh my gosh, had I known what I'd be doing today, 10 yeah. years ago, I would never have done it. Exactly. Like, no, yeah. no way. So yeah. it is like step by step. And then eventually you do take some bigger risks. Um, yeah. But you know, wherever that, wherever that joy is, wherever, I mean, it's no secret where they're going to take you. They're going to take you to joy. They're going to yeah. take you it, and joy, meaning it could also be whatever enrages you in the world. Like yeah. that could be, it could be your great pleasure mwah, to solve that problem, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so good. So good. So what are wealth blockers and how do they stand in our way? We're you know, back on this topic of money. Yeah. Wow. So, um, so wealth blockers are those either conscious beliefs that we have about money and also unconscious beliefs mm -hmm. that we have about ourselves and our abilities, our capability. So a lot of us grew up watching women be uh, lesser than, um, mm -hmm. like one way or another, not having as much power. So whether we like it or not, there could be something inside of us, even though we're, you know, getting it, we're going to get it. Mm, I'm going to go get mine. But let me tell you, when I'm coaching women, on business, they're the ones I have to talk into raising their prices, not the men. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, so, and, and women ask for permission from their spouses to do things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What I found a lot is that men don't often. Okay. And I don't know which is better. I, you know, I think it's good to consult always, but I'm saying, um, just our very bodies. Now you add if you're a person of color to that, there's that going on. Mm -hmm. um, just a natural kind of like, oh, uh, you know, the world's stacked up against me kind of thing. Uh, so there's these kinds of things, plus our ancestral beliefs. Like, I do believe our ancestors, whether we like it or not, influence how we believe or perceive. So mm -hmm. some folks maybe grew up with 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 farming farming parents who like hate the rich. So so you know, coming to grips with the real story behind the story right. is a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. 
Totally. I mean, I, there was one point where I think one of my, my blockers was around um, that you have to wor work really hard to earn your money. Yes. And that was a, you know, I, I go back to having, you know, a dad who worked really hard and he talked about it always. Um, and, and I did that early in my career as well. I mean, I worked hard a lot, large part of my career, mm -hmm. but there was some point where I decided, well, what if it, what if it flowed easier? And I got curious about it. Right. And it really did start to shift that. I mean, so it's like finding those things, those personal stories of ourselves yes. that opens us up into a different experience. Oh, so true. I mean, you know, just even contemplating seriously that you can work part-time mm -hmm. for a full-time income. Yeah. Um, that you can have money coming in behind the scenes and you not even lifting a finger. Like yeah. all of that was mind blowing for me to think about not too long ago. And now it's happening. Yeah, no, I, I get it. And it's, it's, it's when you shift that up and start being, you know, just open to different ways. Um, it can really yeah, start to shift. So and when, especially if you bring your angels in. So let's talk about how you yeah. bring your angels in. How do our listeners bring angels in around them? Well, the first thing you do is just say, hi. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, just be curious, like you're saying, curiosity mm -hmm. is what keeps us in our original mind, just really observing as opposed to judging or shutting down. Now, I was not, I was not a necessarily a believer in angels, but I didn't not believe in angels either. Uh -huh. I haven't seen them. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You know, so staying, you know, staying a little dumb about it. I don't know, but are you here? <laughs> yeah. Are you here? Show me. And um, so there's really casual ways like that. Uh -huh. And then there's more, uh, uh, formal ways. So I put together like, it, at least in my books, just little, uh, like daily little practices that are a you're able to do and, you know, minute meditations, but the way that I do it, I always start with an invocation and an invocation is just, you know, it's, they've gone on forever and ever and ever, uh, thousands of years, folks have done invocations, whether they are religious or not, right? If they're practicing a different kind of thing, you you call in your allies, you right. know, who, right. whoever they may be. So if you happen to know that, you know, your one of your allies is Archangel Jophiel, hey, I need, I need, to, I need some prettier thoughts. So Archangel Jophiel is a, the beautifier, but she also beautifies and cleanses our soul too. There's many layers to all the angels. So you just do an invocation. So the difference between a prayer and an invocation, they're, they're, ver they're very similar, except for an invocation is, you know, when you're praying, you separate the object. You're like, hey, you over there, come and help me over here. An invocation is you activating and awakening that life force within you. Yeah. Um, so you invite this potency in um, or you act as, so since I'm a psychotherapist, I can also look at, at angels as almost inner, as archetypes. Right. And, and it's no less powerful. So whatever, whatever, you know, people want, whatever word you whatever. want to choose is yours to, to, to choose and your experience is yours to choose, but open up to it. Yeah. Open up to it. Cause it's like, if you have six strings on your guitar already, mm -hmm. when you open up to these other frequencies, these other strings, you, you can open up to a thousand different strings mm. of your instrument. Right. So I, I love that analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So cool. So, um, some of the ways you, I know that you talk about as a wealth altar, you also talk about channel writing. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah. Okay. So which you want to know about channel writing? Yeah, let's, either. I mean, I want to hear about both of them, but so. okay. So channel writing, um, is, is, you know, a lot of times we do it without even knowing it, but when you, when you write with the intention of accessing that particular string on your instrument and you sit and you wait and you let whatever words flow in the beginning, um, you can ask a specific question and write, just write whatever flows without judging it. Yeah, and yeah. then look at, look at what you got. A lot of people, when they do this process, how do I know I'm not making it up? Well, you got to try what you wrote and yeah. then see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's the trust is built from action. Yeah. <laughs> not not from sitting around and thinking. It's so funny because I so I have a deck of inspiration cards that I wrote probably 10 years ago. Wow. Called Pony Pondering Inspiration Cards. Oh. And I had a 
I found an artist that just out of the blue on Facebook, I'm like, do you want to collaborate on this? I love your artwork. And so we ended up collaborating mm -hmm. on that. She sent me 50 pieces of art and I would pull one in the morning and I would look at the picture and then I would write. And that was, and literally the 50 cards all got written and there was very, very little editing that needed to be done. And I can go back at those now and look at them and go, I don't even know who wrote the, I mean, I don't even remember writing this, right? And who wrote this? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's, I know very clearly now, and I didn't know at the time, but it was very much channeling through me um, <laughs> because yeah. I, I look at that and go, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. And so, um, that opening to the channel to let that flow through you is oh, so powerful. And those cards are all around the world. They help, you know, and I, I hear, I mean, I, know, hear from right? I hear people, you know, will reach out to me from Australia, from, you know, wherever. And they're like, oh my gosh, I got the best card today. And it just makes, it fills my heart up that, that, you know, that inspiration flowed through, um, in such beautiful ways. That is so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I found, um, a channel writing that I did about 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it was after the miracle happened, but before I was, before I owned, I got over my ankle <laughs> shame. <laughs> um, and so I just found it. I don't even remember writing it. Right. But I'm telling you the stuff. I mean, it was so accurate. Right. I couldn't even believe what I was reading. It was like, don't worry about your books. We'll write them th for you. We'll write them through you. Don't worry about. And I was like, I'm not writing any. What, what do you? Talk? I didn't even want to be an author at the time. And this, <laughs> but all this other stuff, you know. Oh, and so much of the texture of what it said. I made a social media post um, on my Facebook page that said all of that stuff. And at the time, I'm sure it was like, what am I? What is coming through me? I don't even know what I'm talking about here. And now, yeah. I mean, so yes, channel writing is so magical, so powerful. Yeah, so, so powerful. powerful. Yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, engaging it, doing it consciously. But again, taking steps towards those directions is a yeah. good idea. Yeah. And what's on your wealth altar? What's on my wealth altar? I mean, my all my altar changes all the time mm -hmm. with 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 my mood and with my son. So, uh, so uh, right now it's a big old, it's a big angel. Here, I'll show you. Can I show it to you? you can, well, the, the listeners won't be able to hear it, so you have to describe it. Okay. So, um, it's it's this beautiful, um, dark skinned angel. She's wearing all black, but her arms are in her her wings are out upstretched to the heavens uh -huh. and, and it looks like the shape of a cup. Ah, <laughs> so, so it's, it's really like, oh. opening up to, yeah. So uh, yeah. When I think of wealth, it's just about just being open to receive. Yeah. And so, so with the wealth altars, it's just symbolic. So what, what inspires you when I look at her, she's got it all together. You know, she's yeah. like, coming from the heart she's praising some goodness in life and also receptive to goodness to come back to her yeah yeah so good so good so it's really to pay attention to what's coming to you in the in the moment and and, and create and create the sacred space for that create the sacred space you know what's coming through for me right now for your audience is to remember you know your pleasure and your joy are actually co-facilitators in your ability to really receive money in the way that you want to receive it, mm -hmm. meaning it's not going to make you crazy. So yeah. if you attract wealth based on your joy, your pleasure, your, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just make sure it feels good because all of us can be, go to wall, you know, go train and be on wall street, right? We yeah. can all, we know how to make cash, but what kind and yeah, pleasure, joy, that's like up on the docket right now, spiritually, I keep on getting that over and over again joy, your joy, your pleasure, no more sacrifice. Yeah. The other word that's been coming up for me is awe to really oh. feel into the awe. Oh, um, yeah. Right. Because it, it's just that energy. Um, if you're feeling into the awe, it's, it's, that's your, there's the magic yeah. of that one too. That's cool. Yeah. The, yeah. That's cool. It's like, it's like, they're trying to get us to stop being so mature and remember what it's like to be a child, be yeah. in awe. Right. Yeah, totally. So what's in your book? Tell us what's in your book. All new kinds one. of good stuff. Okay, so so the new one is is full of you really caught things to really look at. I talk about wealth blockers. Uh, I also talk about 
some of the habits that I've seen from some really wealthy, self-made um, heart-centered folks mm -hmm. and some of those things that they have. And I, I walk people through, I explain what it is. And if you feel like you need some support in this particular quality, this angel helps with this. Oh, so, cool. so I go through that first part just to kind of help you identify. And I give people angels for that. And there's also like an inside encyclopedia of some of my favorite angels to work with when it comes to um, cash and next leveling your cash and all the things that might come with that, like mm -hmm. self-esteem, confidence, magnetism, um, respect. What, what's one? Oh, celebrity. <laughs> and people are like, oh, you're a celebrity. Well, do you want to be celebrated by even your family? Yeah. Then you're going to want to have this angel because yeah. you feel celebrated in life. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So really and that, that an 11 day ritual. At okay. The end. At the end. So yeah. there's a ritual that they can go in to really start to, to, to move into that. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. It, you know, what's awesome about it. It's, it's awesome because it works for a lot of people yeah. and if they keep posting, um, and I, or they'll email me and, and just say the most amazing. And I'm so excited for them because some of it is like radical. I had a woman just post that she, she got an unexpected $17,000 like from the government and it wasn't taxes for this year it was like historic you know five ten years <laughs> years oh, ago that's awesome i know she still doesn't know fully why but it definitely wasn't this year it wasn't for this year oh that's so cool so I so know. cool so uh, where can they find your book uh they can find it uh at barnes and noble amazon and also a at your local bookstores as well um, and my, did I say my website? My no, website. you haven't said your website yet. So. Yeah, yeah, you can find it there, corinnegrillo.com. Cool. And, and are you on all the socials? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I'm on Facebook. There's an Instagram action. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Well, so cool. So cool. I can't wait to, I have the book. I haven't gotten into it too far yet. So um, I'm looking forward to really reading it all now. It's oh, thanks fun. for having me. Yeah. 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 So fun. the final question I always close with are what are three pearls of wisdom you want to leave us with today? Okay. Let me ask the angels. I think they already gave you one. Maybe that's why <laughs> they're like jumping the gun. Joy, joy yeah. and pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Lead with joy and pleasure. Um. And I think with your audience, there's a lot of pushers, move aheaders. Let's let's mm -hmm. get let's get it done. They're saying um, to be like the cup, receive, Ooh, really have open more up time. To the cup. Nice. Yeah, be open, receive inspiration. Um, and sometimes your inspiration doesn't come right in that moment. It uh -huh. might you know, so don't just ask for it. And when well, so I'm going to pause you there because this is super cool. I did my meditation this morning. And it was actually a spirit meditation because I've been doing the Gabby Bernstein 21 day challenge. And so it was her spirit meditation this morning. And the message I received was receive. <laughs> oh yeah. It's a really good one because people don't know what that means. What does that even mean? Yeah. 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 It means don't push, let yeah. yourself be supported. If we're so busy pushing too hard, you can't even catch the goodness coming Yeah. and there's no, there's no downtime. So yeah, receive. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's really wild. Um, was there one more that I need? Okay, yeah, one more. Okay, let's see. Mm. So they're taking me deep into the belly, deep into mm. the womb, and there are there's some people that they want to connect with that are having trouble accessing a deeper passion or a real feeling passionate mm. about life, feeling fire. Okay. Um, so I see a lot of fire for your people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you're someone who's kind of like bored AF mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and just doesn't know, like, okay, we're, you know, ask, please ask the angels to help you ignite your passion. Um, Archangel, um, who's it? Haniel can sometimes help with that part of your belly, help you find joy, but it can, they can also help you with a little passion. So you can start there. Um, but it's possible to feel passionate no matter what age you are. It's not your age. They're saying it's not your age. It's not your age that makes you not feel passion. Okay. Mm, it's, okay. it's life yeah, that yeah. has crusted over it's life. Yeah. It's life. You know, my book is called fire dancer. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. No. It like, is. Oh my God. I'm just like fire's coming in hot and heavy. <laughs> 
That's so good. So oh. good. Oh my oh, gosh, I'm talking, talking to you, girl. Well, Corinne, this has been so much fun. And thank you yeah. for spreading all the good the good wisdom that's flowing through you and um, into others. And um, thank you for being on this earth, just bringing all this good angel wisdom. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having me. I cannot even believe that I get to do this for a living. I can't. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. I, I get it. I totally get you it. You know, right? <laughs> I do. Wow. More, come on, everybody. Everybody else do it. That's right. Do come join else. us. Yeah, come yeah. join yeah. us. Excellent. Well, Corinne, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.